Эстетика в разрезе с Ольгой Засеевой. Джумы Масия. Доктор медицины. Профессор. Пластический и реконструктивный хирург. Директор отделения микрохирургии и реконструкции молочной железы клиники Планас, Барселона. Джем, я так рада видеть вас снова, особенно в это время страшное время. И я рада, что вы сказали, что вы мой герой, потому что вы смогли летать в Москву в эти два года. Это первый раз, первый международный спикер. Это очень круто. Это не просто. Это не просто to move nowadays mm -hmm. because uh, still, you know, the COVID mm -hmm. is rem very close to us, some limitations. And also, I think our life changed a lot, no, in the last two years. In general, uh, what I can see is most of my colleagues, people who are, who used to travel a lot and who used to share time with, with some of their colleagues in the meeting, now they become more sedentaries, you know, people who, who like To, to be less out, they prefer to be in their own place. But for me, honestly, it's a great pleasure to be here because I love this country, I love especially Moscow and all your work that you are doing. I think what you are sharing inside of this um, Russian scientific community is very important. It's the way to teach and you always try to bring the best people and the latest innovations In, in Russia, and this is why I came here. First, because I think is what uh, my contribution, it could be positive for, for the scientific community, but especially because I, I love okay. and I enjoy always my time in, in Moscow with you. Yeah, thank you very much, because really I am very happy, and as you mentioned, absolutely right, we position ourselves, we don't want to teach, we don't want to push someone to do something which is done in the international society but we would like to to make a strong networking because the the person the surgeon they will find out his way he will find out what he wants to do in terms of the patients to be to be treated the best way and i think in that case uh, we are very lucky because you are one of the unique professors who teach all over the world and i think the way that americans invited european To teach, that's mean, for me, that's mean a lot because usually they don't want uh, any intervention from any, any, any countries. But so. in this case, I think that you are really, really the best one and the option for the Russian doctors to be taught by you directly. I think this is, I think we should explain that the cost of course in Stanford University, how much the students should pay to be able to get uh, such kind of high level specialists like you. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is, is the, the nice thing, you know, is two weeks ago I was in Stanford, you know, the, the, the most famous American university and probably with the, high, the highest, you know, um, economical mm -hmm. support. And now I'm in Moscow, completely different world and different life system, different teaching. But going back to the essence, when obviously it is is a, a nice rec international recognition with, when uh, a university like Stanford invite you as a visiting professor. But for me, what I can do in Stanford, to share what I know, exchange ideas, is more profi profitable here in, in, uh, in Russia because I think that this kind of elite universities, they have all the sources but it's only for a few people. I think when, when we came here, I can see that here you have all kind of levels of surgeons, people from cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg that you have everything, but also people from some other small cities. And what we can do in a place like this, I think has more impact in the society because we can share ideas, share knowledge, shared little tricks that they, they, the way to spread is faster and wider. Mm -hmm. And I think this is why I, nowadays I like to go to places when I think our, you know, a four can have more benefit on the population. Mm -hmm.
эстетика в разрезе. It's very interesting if I may ask you. The, there are, is there a difference between European students, American students, and let's say the Russian group of the Russian doctors who ask the questions? Do they ask the different questions? Do they uh, want uh, to get the different information? Uh, how does it work? The thing is completely different. The American system is very competitive. The, the is for, the, for the students, they want always to, to go very fast on the top. And in some way, they sometimes they, are, they want to run too fast, you know? The European people, because it's completely different, the, the health system in America is mainly private. Insurance are completely private. European is more you know, a state, you know, system, universal, everything is covered. And then the students, they grow up, I think, in the right rim, you know. They, they work hard and they build the career in, in, in a more, not a slow, but more a space, you know. And when you see the people, the Russian people, the Russian people are pretty similar to the European because there are not differences, but yeah. culturally there is a, a difference. The people in Russia is a little bit more shy. At the beginning, they need more time to open and to make questions. The, the, it's, a, it's a mixture between respect and shyness. Once the people, they, they are with you, because they have many, many Russian trainees that they came to Barcelona and spent it with us, they are completely <coughs> like the other European trainees. But at the beginning, they are a little bit more shy, more distant, more respect. Probably language, probably language. Probably it's language, and, probably language and some cultural things. Mm -hmm. I, I try to, to stimulate them to, to be like, some, like the other ones. But yeah, no, but in our system, when you talk to professor, it's always you need to. To yeah, probably that, make that a is, distance. That is what you say. Is mm. the respect, the distance, yeah. you know? In Europe, at the end, everybody we try to be, especially the Spanish yeah. people from from Southern Europe, they like to be very close. Mm -hmm. We we don't like to put walls. We don't mm -hmm. need barriers. Mm -hmm. You know, the respect mm -hmm. is not keeping distance. The respect is respect mm -hmm. to your knowledge, and and for me, it's very nice to to get you know, good close and warm relationship with the people who are working with us. Jeremy, yeah. you're absolutely right. We start to travel less. And if you may uh, tell me what, in your opinion, how your professional uh, scale was changed during this COVID time? What was more important? What was less important? Maybe some, I mean, because breast reconstruction, it's, uh, you can't wait or you can't, let's say, wait till COVID will go on and start to breast reconstruction. What have been changed? What was stay the same level? I think, in, in, mm. in fact, at the beginning of this COVID crisis, with all this you know, big health problem of how to manage the patients, we thought that the impact of the, of the COVID problem, it was, it was bigger than it has been, you know? When you see, mm. There was obviously in the first wave in, the, in May and April, there was less activity because everything was stopped. All the, the health system hospitals they were working for to, to try to help the people with the COVID. But after that, I must tell you that it's nearly the same way to work as before. And in some other fields, like for example, cosmetic surgery, aesthetic surgery, even the demand of cosmetic surgery is higher because the people, they cannot travel, the people, they cannot move, the people have more time uh, to be at home, the people, some of them, they can, you know, make uh, working this kind of telework from, mm. from uh, home. And home then office, yeah. All, all this time plus mm. some mm. extra money because the people, they don't travel, mm. they invest in themselves. And it's true that when you see the numbers, the, the, especially the aesthetic surgery has increased a lot, you know, mm -hmm. comparing when, from before the COVID. It's true that, that for people like, like me, that we're traveling probably too much before the COVID, also the COVID has been good because we make a, a, a big break and then 
probably we have had more time for us, you know, to take care of your mm. own life, to be more with the family, but to take care about you. Because when you are working so much, traveling because you are in conference, then going to, to your place doing surgery, you don't have time for you. You have time for everybody. You have time to be in Moscow. You have time to be with this patient. You have time to be the family, but not for you. And, and this has been, I think, good, you know, to have a little bit more time for, for myself. So it's a healthy break. I think it's a healthy, honestly, yeah. healthy. I, yeah. I have time to start doing more sport than before, to have, thing, to, to have time for thinking. This is something that, that it seems unbelievable, but when you have this kind of life that is too busy, sometimes you don't have to think about mm -hmm. what you want or what is um, making you happy. Aesthetica в разрезе. Tell me, what do you think will be the breaking news in the next five years in the breast uh, reconstruction surgery, breast aesthetic and reconstruction <coughs> surgery? There are always innovations, no? because even I remember like five, ten years ago, I thought, no, there is nothing else to do. We can transfer all the tissue with uh, just fat, free flaps, you know, perforators, the latest implants. But you see that always there are changes, no? Now we have much better implants than before. We have, you know, even we are optimizing the way to, to put this, this fat grafting, or, or even new flaps that even we, we didn't know that it wanna, can appear. But for the next, I really think that there is one thing that is coming, is the, the fat banking, is why not taking the fat in one surgery and keep the fat? And then we can put the fat to do it, this kind of serial breast, augmentations with fat or complement this hybrid implant plus fat, you can do it in, in a very easy way in the office. And I think this is very close to have fat banking real possibilities at an affordable way and price. Also, I think they are potentially coming some evolution of the implants. The implants, they are not going to be like we know, just a bag of silicone. In more than implant is going to be like a scaffold that is going to be integrating the body and is going to help to create volume and to restore, you know, when you, ha you have a breast like cancer and you miss. The body. Yeah, and also to improve and do kind of mm -hmm. breast enlargement. I think this is also quite close. And at the end, when you see in one sentence what is the evolution of the plastic surgery, we are doing much better because it's going to be more physiological like what we do mm -hmm. with less impact on the body. It means it's this kind of minimal invasive surgery. We have less and less scars. We have, you know, um, we use less and less allo allogenic products. Mm -hmm. It's like, in, in fact, this is like our daily life, you know. We are escaping mm -hmm. from this kind of huge you know, fast food. We, we are trying to, to get more organic products, mm. better, less, but better. And this is, the surgery is going to be the same. The best surgery is the surgery which never been done. What do you think about this? Obviously, it, it's always better to need, you know, any surgery. And the, the ideal is don't need any doctor. <laughs> and, but they have to, to, you can read in two ways. One is obviously, if you don't need, don't do the surgery. But the other, the other sign is something that one professor of, that I had when I was young said that the reputation is in the same way. The reputation came not only about the good surgery you do, it came from the good, the, the surgery that you said that is better than do it. I mean, sometimes you must tell to the patients, okay, we are not going to, to cover this expectation or we cannot help you or what you want is not possible to get it. Mm -hmm. And it's better to say no than to have something that is going to be worse for the patient. And this is very important. Aesthetica в разрезе. 
с Ольгой Засимовой.